Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to explore something super interesting, the physical, the physical features, features of India. Of India. Now before you yawn thinking, oh no, geography again, wait a second. Trust me, this chapter is literally like a Netflix series. Mountains, deserts, plateaus, rivers, islands, India has them all. And by the end of this video, you'll actually see why our country is called a land of diversity. So grab your chai, let's dive in. Himalayas, India's wall of ice. Let's start from the top, literally the top of India, the Himalayas. These mountains are like India's natural bouncers, standing tall and saying no entry to cold winds and invaders. Do you know how massive they are? The Himalayas stretch across five countries, India, Nepal, Bhutan, China, and Pakistan. They're home to the world's tallest peaks, including Mount Everest. And fun fact, the Himalayas are still growing. Yep, tectonic plates are pushing, and these mountains rise about two centimeters every year. So basically, the mountains are leveling up even when you're sleeping. The Himalayas are divided into three ranges. Himadri, or Greater Himalayas, where peaks like Kanchenjunga and Nanda Devi sit proudly. Always snow-covered, basically the insta-models of mountains. Himachal, or Lesser Himalayas, valleys like Kashmir, Shimla, Manali. If you've seen Bollywood movies with snowy love scenes, it was probably shot here. Shiwaliks, the outer Himalayas, smaller in height but full of forests, wildlife, and adventure spots. And it's not just about looking pretty. The Himalayas are water factories. Rivers like the Ganga, Yamuna, Brahmaputra all start here. Without these rivers, half of India wouldn't survive. They also block freezing winds from Central Asia, which is why our winters are not like Siberia's. Real fact. The Himalayas also act like climate managers. They catch the monsoon winds, forcing them to drop rain in India. Matlab Himalayas na hote to India, ek desert hota. Crazy, right? The Northern Plains, India's food basket. From the heights of the Himalayas, water flows down and creates something magical. The Northern Plains. Imagine a giant flat green carpet spreading from Punjab all the way to Assam. This land is one of the most fertile regions on Earth. Why? Because every year the rivers bring fresh soil called alluvium. It's like nature's free delivery service. That's why farmers here grow everything. Wheat in Punjab, rice in Bihar, sugarcane in UP, jute in West Bengal. This region feeds hundreds of millions of people. That's why we call it India's food bowl. Here's a fun fact. The Northern Plains alone house more than 40 crore people. That's more than the population of the entire USA, living just in this one strip of land. No wonder the plains are buzzing with cities. Delhi, Kolkata, Lucknow, Patna, all built here. And these rivers aren't just for farming. They're transport highways, too. Before trains and planes, boats on rivers like the Ganga were the original delivery guys. Even today, the Ganga-Brahmaputra river system is used for navigation. So if the Himalayas are India's protectors, the Northern Plains are India's providers, giving us food, water, and homes. The Peninsular Plateau, ancient treasure chest. Okay, now we leave the flat green plains and head south. The land suddenly rises, becomes rocky, uneven, full of hills and plateaus. Welcome to the Peninsular Plateau, the ancient grandpa of India's geography. Unlike the Himalayas, which are young and still growing, the plateau is old, stable, and made of hard rocks. Scientists say it's one of the oldest land masses in the world, dating back to when dinosaurs still existed. The plateau is divided into two main parts, the Central Highlands and the Deccan Plateau. Between them lie the Vindhya and Satpura ranges. On the sides, the Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats rise like guards along the coast. But here's the cool part. The plateau is a treasure chest. Coal, iron ore, mica, bauxite, even gold, it's all here. That's why big industries, mining towns, and power plants are found in states like Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, and Odisha. The Deccan Plateau has another superpower, black soil. 
This soil is perfect for cotton farming. That's why Maharashtra and Gujarat became cotton-growing kings, and cities like Mumbai turned into textile hubs. And of course, the plateau isn't just about rocks and soil. It's home to waterfalls like Jog Falls, rivers like Narmada and Godavari, and forests full of biodiversity. So if the northern plains are India's breadbasket, the plateau is India's toolbox, full of resources and energy. The Thar Desert, land of survival. From the rocks of the plateau, let's jump to the sands of Rajasthan. The Thar Desert, hot, dry, sandy, and extreme. Here, summer heat can go above 50 degrees Celsius. Nights are freezing. Rainfall? Ha! Huh. Hardly any. Life in the desert is all about survival. But here's the thing. Humans adapt. Camels, known as the ships of the desert, make life possible by carrying goods and people. Villages grow around oases, small patches of water. People wear bright, colorful clothes to beat the dullness of the landscape. Fun fact. Rajasthan has the most colorful turbans because each style shows your community or region. And despite being a desert, Rajasthan is full of culture, music, dance, forts, palaces, and festivals. Jai Salmer, with its golden sand dunes, is basically India's desert jewel. So yes, the desert may look empty, but it's alive with resilience, color, and culture. The Coastal Plains, India's Sea Gateways. Now let's move to the coasts. On both sides of the plateau, India has long coastal plains. On the eastern side, along the Bay of Bengal, the coastal plain is wide and fertile. Rivers like the Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna, and Kaveri flow here and form big deltas. The Sundarbans Delta in West Bengal is the largest delta in the world and home to the Royal Bengal Tiger. Imagine a forest that grows inside water. That's the Sundarbans. On the western side, along the Arabian Sea, the coastal plain is narrow, but very important. Mumbai, Goa, Kochi, all lie here. For thousands of years, these ports have been India's connection to the world. Ancient spice traders, Arab merchants, Portuguese explorers, everyone came through here. Even today, Mumbai port handles a huge chunk of India's trade. And of course, let's not forget the beaches. Goa, Kerala backwaters, Marina Beach in Chennai. Our coasts are not just about trade, they're also about tourism and relaxation. So you see, the coastal plains are like India's doors, connecting us to the outside world while also giving us fertile land and fisheries. The islands, jewels of India. And finally, we can't forget the little dots in the ocean, India's islands. In the Arabian Sea, we have Lakshadweep, small coral islands with lagoons and coconut palms. Super chill, perfect for tourism, and home to some of the best marine life in India. In the Bay of Bengal, we have the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. These are bigger, covered in dense tropical forests, and rich in biodiversity. Fun fact, the Andamans have tribes like the Sentinelese who live without any contact with the outside world. They still live the way humans did thousands of years ago. These islands are not just pretty tourist spots. They're also strategically important for India's navy and defense. They're like watchtowers in the ocean. Conclusion. The Grand Story of India. So when you look at it all together, the physical features of India aren't just landforms. They're characters in a grand story. The Himalayas are the protectors. The plains are the providers. The plateau is the treasure chest. The desert is the survivor. The coasts are the connectors. The islands are the jewels. Each one is different, but together they make India what it is, a land of diversity, beauty, and resilience. So the next time you look at a map of India, don't just see boring lines. See mountains, plains, deserts, plateaus, coasts, and islands, each with its own personality and story. And that's it for today's journey through the physical features of India. If you enjoyed this storytelling vibe, smash that like button, subscribe for more fun geography breakdowns, and share this with your friends who always sleep in geography class. Let's make learning fun, not boring. Until next time, keep exploring, keep vibing, and keep loving the land we live on.